Welcome back, everyone, to race three of the Overtake Dream Team series. The one series where we take your favorite content creators and put them in teams together with their own community to compete here in F1 2021. I said already, we're in race three. That means we're just coming out of Silverstone. And if you missed Silverstone and the run for this great trophy, then you missed a thrilling race. It was really chaotic, have to say that, with a lot of safety cars out there on the track. A few penalties here that, that we had to hand out and made sure that people obey the law more or less. But we also saw Amos having a great rise through the entire grid, showcasing his skill and his pace and why he's one of the favorites for our Dream Team series. The other big question of Silverstone was obviously if Maxime can bounce back because she had a tough race, but we know that she can do a lot better and he's a lot faster than what we currently see on the track. With Silverstone out of the way and us heading over to a third race, we're now visiting Belgium and the iconic track of spa franc -Orchon. If you're not familiar with that layout, you're to blame because it's a great, great track. And we'll see even more action on this one. I'm absolutely sure about that. But before we jump into any of the action that's actually in-game, let's have a quick look at the starting grid and Ermin. Thank you, Renee. But first, some highlights from qualifying. But in this track, you, you don't need to use the curb, no? Uh, in this game, Apparently, you don't need to use the brakes either. Rastro, my God, I, I know I received the penalty because of, because of that. I really, oh my God, my God, my God. Rastro, Ra my fan, no, is my fan, no. I invited him. He completely blocked me in the in the uh, during the Oruge, no? That's not fair. Yeah, it completely blocked me in the Oruge and I received the five grid penalty. I I really wow. I can't can't see how schnell I'm here. That's what my seen. Our own champion Joe, they're doing a textbook bot ass on Jay. You should definitely work for the hired assassins at Mercedes. Fastest lap time, we have Amos heading down the start stop straight to begin what is the fastest lap of the session. He's gonna break at the 100 board, breaking hard, going into La Source. Just a little bit of the curb on the inside, a touch of the curb on the outside, definitely not using as much of the runoff as you can. Very conservative approach from Amos here. Blasting down towards Rouge and Radeon, completely flat out through here, of course. One of the last times we'll ever see F1 cars take this configuration, this portion of the track now, of course, under renovation for safety reasons. As we blast down the Camel Straight, heading towards the comb, how deep in the brake zone is he going to go? Well deep, well onto that curb, grabbing a little bit of the curbs on the inside and outside, very, very well contained. No snaps on the exits there, oh, a little bit of one on the exit curb, heading down into Bruxelles. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I am terrible with French. Heading down towards No Name. Is he just going to tap on the brake there? Yes, just bring the nose in ever so slightly. Smash on the throttle. A very interesting line there. Not advisable to be used in the real world as we go down into Puan. Absolutely flat out now mid-corner. These cars so packed with aerodynamic downforce. It's almost like watching a video game. Heading down into campus now. Just blasting on through. Amazingly textbook run by Amos here. A little bit of the curb on the inside, a bit of the runoff on the outside, all flat through here, heading down towards the mighty Blanchemont. So far, a textbook lap from Amos, seemingly untouchable by the rest of the field. 125 leading towards the end, 127 through Blanchemont now, easy flat in these cars, heading down towards the bus stop chicane, rapid brake zone. Is he going to lock up? No lock up, textbook. Bring it back in. This rendering of the bus stop chicane, perhaps not entirely true to life, but that doesn't matter to Amos, who crosses the line with a 142.2, which is enough for pole position. And here's our starting grid. Hydro starts in pole position after Amos's penalty, with Jesper from Team J in second. Rai and the nickname of the championship, Dr. Coco Snoot, following up on the second row. Amos and Sulky following up in 5th and 6th after Amos's unfortunate penalty robbing him of pole. Rastro for Team Amos and Jay in 7th and 8th respectively. Cholova and Gwig in 9th and 10th for Team Maxime and Team Anna respectively. Maxime and Gamer Muscle side by side which is sure to generate some entertaining racing if not intensive. Followed by Josue and El Rey, our championship leader, seemingly not having the best time in qualifying. 
Emery in 15th next to Formula Lina. Emery not showing her usual performance here in F1 2021. Thomas and Whipper on the second last row with our very own champion Joe next to Anna on air, bringing up the rear of the grid. Thanks for the great overview, and as you probably saw, unfortunately, we won't have Jimmy Broadband today due to personal reasons, but hey, we get Joe, Champion Joe from Overtake, and maybe one day he evolves into Championship Joe if he ever wins one. Who knows? Definitely not today, I will tell you that. But I will give you a few more insights before heading onto the track at Spa, and one of that is that El Rey actually really struggled with track limits in qualification two. And uh, never happened in motorsport to hear someone struggling with uh, track limits, right? Will be hard for him to get through the grid. That's for sure. Another thing to watch out for in today's episode is definitely the battle between Jay and Maxime because there might be a rivalry in the room, right? There's, I think there's something going on and we'll probably see that on today's uh, track. Also, look out for all the new fans and followers that joined us. You know that the community of every of these content creators in the Dream Team series can pick drivers and their race on today. So we've got new names for you every single time we, we're here and hopefully they will make their content creators proud. But enough of me and all that talking, let's head into the race. And now for the Community Championship standings. We have Mr. Mullis and Stewie Design for Ryan J at 41 points. Joel G and Thomas in second position for Gamer Muscle and Jimmy Broadbent with 25 points. Tied with Thomas Vink and Whipper for Maxime and Emily Jones at 25 also. Colju and Overtake with 21 points. And coming up at the rear is Alexandre and Cecilino for Hydro and Anna on Air with 18 points. In the creator team standings, we have El Rey Giri playing Amos Lorito with 41 points leading the championship, Rai and Jay in second position with 27, Hydro and Anna on air with 22 points right in the middle, Maxim and Emily Jones coming up in fourth position with 22 points, and the mighty Gamer Muscle and Jimmy Broadbent bringing up the rear of the standings with 13 points. Here we are in the starting grid of the Belgian GP as the lights count down and... It's lights out and away they go. We have Hydro taking control of the race on the inside. In the Red Bull, we have Jesper and Rye coming up right behind his McLaren. Are we going to be composed through La Source? So far, so good. No, we have a couple of McLaren. We have a McLaren going wide. A few cars going wide after the leaders go through. Luckily, the front of the field remains untouched. Luckily, we have a lot of runoff there at La Source. Nice and easy composed run through Radeon there. Hydro is still well in the lead. Jesper right up behind him with Rye well in the toe on the camel straight now. Coming up into Lacombe. Rye goes for the move on the inside. Breaks deep, but gets out broken by Jesper. But Jesper goes wide. No, back on the track. Oh, Jesper, that's one nicht good. Rye now taking Biden second position going down to Broxay. Deep break. Decent line. Hydro making up a bit of a gap on the rest of the field here. And we're looking, we see a bit of a scuffle with the Haas. There seems to have been contact between Guig and Jose Carvajal here at Saab Bruxelles. Watching the replay now from Guig's perspective, we can see he just dives on the inside. We get a bit of a front left and a rear right contact there. Guig comes the worst off. Jose fortunately manages to keep driving on. Through Puan now, we're following Rastro in sixth position, following right up behind Dr. Coco Snoot. Gotta be the name of this championship. As they go through the S, yes, leading on towards Stavolo. Hydro here still leading the race by over a second reasonably good gap that's formed here. And through Stavolo, Rastro loses it straight into the fence, and he's lost the car. Oh, oui, pas. Genre, si y a une safety car qui pop, je vais hurler, hein. Hydro there leading the race after his unfortunate disqualification in the last GP. I suppose he probably feels he has a lot to make up for and certainly more than the ability to actually do it. And Gwig loses his car, he spins out over Radeon. Pretty much what you don't want to happen. Did he catch the curb incorrectly on the inside? Did he get flung? Anna on air on the Camel Street, deep in the toe of Formula Lina's car. Will she make a move on the inside? Anna a bit over ambitious on the inside there. Alrighty then. Mm. If only F1s were vocal powered. Anna there, unfortunately coming off the worst for wear after that scuffle on the inside of Lacombe. Mm. 
Our championship leader, El Rey, now on lap three as he goes through La Source, having a really bad time in qualifying, unfortunately not even putting in a single time lap in Q2. What is happening with El Rey? We aim to find out here as he goes through Eau Rouge and Radeon, coming out onto the Camel Straight. He's about a second, a second and three tenths off from Jose in tenth position. Not normally the kind of performance we're used to seeing from El Rey. I'm going to look home now. Not really using the entirety of the track here. In the lead, we of course still have Hydro, followed by Amos Laredo with Rai coming up behind. It seems like Jesper has fallen into fourth from second position. Wasn't able to hold it after that very strong qualifying performance. El Rey now heading down into No Name. That's and he loses it. El Rey just having a really bad time here at Spa. For some reason, it just does not play to his strengths. Is it a setup issue? Is it a preparation issue? Is it just a, a bad day? Going through Puan now. Hopefully not too much damage on the car. Weather shouldn't play a factor today. We're expecting it to remain dry throughout. Dry seem like the fastest tire at the moment. El Rey's throttle pedal seemingly with a mind of its own there. I cannot continue like this. Luckily, you won't be able to now. Watching the race start now, closer to the midfield from Jay's perspective. Let's see where everybody went wide. I'm very curious to see where did it all go awry. Going down to La Source now. If we remember, I think he went. Oh, he got sent deep! Got sent deep by the Haas! Sent wide and penalized to boot, it seems. What does this mean? What does this bode for the ongoing, ages-old rivalry between Jay and Maxime, who's right up behind him now? The, the, he's being told to give the position back, but he's not doing it. It's not happening. That's a Chad move. Lap 4 now, following the nickname of the championship, Dr. Coco Snoot. I will never get tired of saying this. Going into La Source now here in lap 4. McLaren on the inside. Oh, of course, it goes wheel to wheel. It would not be sim racing otherwise. La Source is a bumper car haven. Now the Alpha Tauri leading with Jay right behind. I guess he would have served that penalty from before. Some good position gains by Jay over the first three laps, of course, with the DRS and the toe. Coco Snoot has no chance here going to Lacombe. Jay takes the ideal line. Oh, but slightly locks the brakes. No, still good. Still held. He's still got it. Lap five, and Jay is behind Dr. Coco Snoot once again, going through Puan. Half a second. We've still got Hydra on the lead of the race with Amos just behind Rai, Jasper, and now for the quasi midfield battle here between Dr. Coco Snoot and Jay here through Stavolo. Nein! And that's Jay out, it seems. No, he's lost his front Jeez, wing by the looks of things, but he might be able to go into the pits for a repair. That's Jay having crashed out in every single round so far. Okay, ich fahre noch. Aber front flügel is weg. Lap 6 now as Amos chases down for the lead of the race. Hydro still leading. Amos completely glued to his rear with about two tenths of a second coming up onto the Camel Straight. No, man. Hydro probably knows. He knows once the DRS kicks in, it's all over here. Going into Lacombe. Yep, nice and easy move. Takes the ideal line, Amos, taking the lead of the race nice and wide onto that entry curb. Textbook lines here through Lacombe. Hydro not able to follow, not able to retake his position. Absolutely textbook by Amos. Lap 7 with Jesper in 4th position, having fallen down, starting in 2nd, now fighting for the podium with Rai here for 3rd position. Getting 3rd, finishing in 3rd would be such a wonderful way for this community racer to actually add some points to his team for the championship. Falling onto the camel now, probably the riskiest part on this entire track as he gets the DRS coming right up behind Rai. Rai takes the inside, tries to defend. Is it going to go wheel to wheel? No. Jesper takes easy overtake there with the DRS. Gamer Muscle somehow finding his way into the midfield of this race behind the legendary Emery with Maxime up in front of them. The girls doing really well in this GP. 
Now, the fact that Gamer Muscle is here in the midfield, this isn't a lapping type situation. Astounding. Anna losing the car once again, and we're following with Gamer Muscle. I don't know who the ghost car is up in front. I'm not sure what I'm witnessing quite here, but Gamer Muscle is actually performing quite well. Right up until that moment. Oh, no. oh yes. Hello. Hello. Gamer Muscle showing us his best Gymkhana driving. Great ping technique. <laughs> The low speed grip is a little bit low, I'd say. Great donut there for the fans. Hope you enjoyed that. Very convenient place <laughs> to spin out. Gamer Muscle always giving the fans what they want to see. It's why he's one of the best creators out there. Ready to go. Complete, go now. Textbook pit, pit entry there from Team Muscle. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. I hope the tyre blankets got those tyres ready for Radeon. Let's see how we go. Oh! Lap 9 as Rastro is completely glued to Formula Lina here in the midfield, going through campus. Nose to tail stuff, rapidly approaching. Going through Stavro now. Rapid closure right there in that Red Bull. Absolutely no patience here by Rastro. Wants to take it before Blanchemont, it seems. On the inside. Very clean overtake there. No DRS required, it seems. Very reminiscent of the old days before we had DRS zones. It almost reminds me of classic Formula One. Great work there. Following on now with Gamer Muscle. Being followed once again, nose to tail by Anna on air, just like the Silverstone GP. Will she dive him on the inside again? Whoa, Anna. Understood, stopping this lap. Oh, hello. I'm trying to get to the pits, mate. <laughs> Gamer Muscle with an addiction for the pit lane in this race. Lap 11, Formula Lina soaring her way through the midfield, somewhere behind Rastro 74. A comfortable lead for our top six contenders here. 18 seconds, Rastro is behind them, and Formula Lina just following him, and Rastro appears to have crashed up ahead. Lina just cruising on by there. And Rastro triggering a safety car. Dann schnell jetzt in die Box. Weil wir mussten so oder so noch mal rein. Oh, safety car, no! I'm, I've just passed the pit. Why do we have a safety car? No. I really just passed the pit entry, like... Maxime unfortunately missing out on that opportunity to pit under safety car. She's been running such a wildly great race here at Spa too. Now Amos and Hydro being able to capitalize on Maxime's lost opportunity here, pitting for new rubber under safety car. That's motorsport, isn't it? You sometimes just have to play the cards that are dealt to you, and it's luck of the draw. Ah! Is he made blanc? Oh, he made rouge aussi, je crois. Oh, je ressors devant! No! Je ressors derrière lui. Oh, ils ont tous made rouge, putain. Ça va être chaud, du coup. Hydro's autopilot almost rear-ending Amos there. And here we go, back out. Well, I'm going to first... I'm going to first... I think the safety car is safe for another round. I'm going to first do nothing with the safety car. But I'm going to keep the safety car in the air. We're just on the side. I don't know. It's fine. That's why I mean. I think the thing is still a bit long. I need Formula Lena. Oh, I need Lena to take it. Now for our restart behind the safety car, we have Amos Lorito leading the start of the pack, followed by Hydro, Jasper, and Rai. Everyone is back to back again. All of the gaps have been closed, and we're going to see a very, very interesting and I'm sure very spirited restart here on the start-stop straight. 
at the Belgian GP. And here we go, Amos Lerito leading the race, followed by Hydro, followed by Jasper. Hydro here rapidly losing the lead of the race to Amos. Amos showing us that same blistering pace that netted him the fastest lap of quali. On the Kemmel now, we have Hydro holding the inside against Jesper, I think it is, and the Red Bull managed to successfully hold it into Lacombe, or does he? Jesper gets the inside, he pushes on through, watching from Ryze's perspective now, the wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle between Hydro and Jesper, Heading down to Broxay, Hydro now has the inside. Jesper still pushing aggressively, but will Rai capitalize on this to get a lead? Yes, he's taken, he's retaken third position. Jesper through being a bit greedy here has actually lost the position, has lost the podium here leading into Puon. Rai now seemingly set on catching Hydro. On oh, Hydro spins! Okay, Hydro Hydro's lost it through Puon! I'm sucked out by the inside curb! No. Oh, no, it's bon, je l'ai rattrapé! Oh, je l'ai rattrapé! Oh, sa mère! Hydro drops down the order, down to fifth position. Got sucked out by the curb. That could have been way more disastrous. About to begin lap 16. Hydro is still in fifth position, just behind Dr. Coco Snoot. I will never get tired of saying this. Let's review the order. We have Amos Lurido in, some might say, his rightful position in this GP, leading the GP by 2.2 seconds, right, right behind him. Jesper having retaken third position, strongly back on the podium. Dr. Coco Snoot almost two seconds behind Sorry. Jesper, with Hydro following yeah, in. On the Camel straight now, getting the lead. Is the DRS going to open? No DRS. With still a comfortable lead. Hydro takes fourth position, making his way back up to the front of the field. What kind of a battle is this going to be? Hydro, always such a strong performer in these GPs. Is he going to be able to battle his way back up to the podium? We have a lot of DNFs in this Grand Prix so far. Rastro, Jose, El Rey Giri, Cho Lover, Whipper, all DNFs so far. And we're only on lap 16 of <laughs> only a 22 lap GP, admittedly. But that's quite a lot of DNFs. A very mysterious new feature from Codemasters here for the F1 2021 game. I haven't seen teleporting like this since the netcode of the late 90s. And on air, now tangling with our very own champion, Joe, having left Stavlo. They're heading down towards Blanchemont. Anna's got the inside. Just playing it very defensive here. Champion Joe. They're all over the place. They're jinking all around. No... No regard for the toe, no regard for the slipstream as Joe dives on the inside, a contact, it's wheel to wheel. Nuts. Joe seems to come off the worst there, spinning out. I think Anna is still going, largely untouched. Goes to show what can happen when you get a little bit too greedy in F1 2021. Yeah, was stupid. For me and for him, but... He must me halt on the line lassen and not einfach reinlenken. Maxime now still leading her glorious race with Jay right up behind. Sends it up the inside. Oh, Jay is dive bombing every fucking time. Uh, I need to stop swearing. Rage old rivalry with Jay still strongly ablaze here, it seems. They really have a thing for each other here in these midfield races. I sincerely hope they're able to create some space and lead their own races. Jay thinks he's playing F1 career mode where the AI moves for him. But we're not <laughs> doing that. <laughs> like Ooh, snap. Jay is still rapidly chasing down Maxime, but of course with his time penalty, it's kind of a moot point. It will be more gentlemanly of him to allow Maxime to just lead her own race here, so it's kind of a moot point as to who ends up where. Though all the more entertaining for us viewers as they head down, Broxe still knows the tail, Jay not giving Maxime an iota of rest. Heading down into Puan now. That inside curb has been dangerous for us in the past. Is Maxime going to be able to traverse this? Oh, just... Ooh, that's safe! That's safe! Oh my just god! Just corrected with a snap and Jay sending it on the inside. I was going sideways, giving the drift show of my life. Saved them. Got in the battle with Jay. Little touch, another drift. Saved them. But I'm getting like 
screwed over by the hard tires completely. So uh, I'm just losing. The overcut strategy seemingly not working out for Maxime there, though she's still rapidly gaining on Jay. Not that it matters so much. Jay with his time penalty breaking hard. Is someone going to lock here? Is Maxime going to get quote unquote screwed again? Well, so far so good. Not as good an exit as Jay out of there though, unfortunately. Jay taking the lead as they almost go three wide into the source. Not almost, literally three wide into the source and they somehow survive. Jay on the inside, Maxime on the outside there. I think Maxime is still in the lead. What a race she's leading. Yeah, it's me up. Flat out through Radeon as always, inside curbs, not bothering anyone's race. Now coming out onto the Camel straight, Jay's going to get the DRS. This should be an easy overtake for him. Does he get the ideal line? Yes, Maxime tries to defend the inside, but probably no space to do so. Oh, no! Breaks late. She is committed to this spot. Maxime has had enough here as Jay still main just barely maintains seventh. That's the hard to camp for you here hinten. Holy no, smokes. Your is oh no, alles offen here. A heck of a race in the midfield there as we jump to lap 19 from the perspective of Rai, second in both the championship and this particular GP. About two and a half seconds away from Amos Lurito, just for about a second behind him, possibly going to get the toe on the DRS on the Camel. Rai, however, not so much. Amos very much leading his own race in this GP, very much set a pace of his own all the way from qualifying up until now. Those modern day DRS battles. Hey, I keep saying the era of the V10s where people just had to send it up the inside was the most exciting, but that's just my humble opinion. Lap 20 as Jay still continues to make Maxime's life a living hell in this GP. She's right behind him, only about two tenths off. Heading onto the camel, this should be an easy, easy DRS overtake here. Hopefully this is the moment where the hard tire gets the advantage over the mediums. Maxime with a hard compound tire having gone for the long haul approach with this. At least I overtook Jay again. Only for about the 20th time so far in this GP, Maxime. But I lost too much time like anyways with these hard tires. So, the damage is already done. <laughs> Jay has 9 seconds of penalties. Second last lap as Rai chases down Jesper. Jesper has taken second position from Rai. An amazing potential finishing position for a community member. A great way to score points for the Red Bull team. Entering DRS view now. Is he going to be able to open up and overtake in the tow? Jesper defends the inside. Very, whoa, what happened there? Very early break by Jesper. It's almost like he was giving the position back to Rai. Now Jay, Rai's teammate, of course, in the orange McLaren, is still following Maxime in the midfield, vying for that seventh position. Such a hard-fought battle over the course of this entire GP. You would think that seventh position is part of the podium. Maybe we can give him an extended podium at the end of this. Easy overtake on Maxime with the DRS on the outside, gets the ideal line, goes into the comb. Nice and easy, but will these mediums hold out against Maxime's hards? In the final lap battle, right now, having retaken second position, three seconds behind Amos, it's safe to say that unless Amos makes a critical error here, he has pretty much sealed the deal with his GP, finally getting his much deserved podium here. Of course, he's also the teammate of El Rey Giri, the champion of our last two GPs, meaning the Ferraris hold an insane level of dominance over this championship currently. Hydro is such a strong qualifier and such a strong contender in our GPs, but just lacking the follow through, unfortunately. He seems to be just outside of the podium positions with a nine second penalty. He may even be down. Stark, Maxim hat's geschafft, ohne Strafe Nein, ich drehe mich in der letzten Schikane weg. Uff. Uff, als ob ich mich in der letzten Schikane weggedreht habe. <lacht> Wie dumm ich bin. Oh nein. Congratulations to Amos for his first Grand Prix win. A comfortable solo cross through the bus stop chicane. As atypical of the real life one as it may be. 
Amos Laredo crosses the finish line for his first GP win and the third for Ferrari of this championship. Absolute Ferrari dominance so far. Amos seemingly practicing his set for the karaoke bar after this. Looking at our spa race, we know one person for sure that had a great race. And that's obviously Ray from the Pixel Hunts. We thought, why not talking to him after such an impressive race? So, hey, Ray. Hey, Ray, Dan. Well, let me ask you first, how are you after the race now? I mean, that, that looked like it was a bit exhausting. Yeah, a little bit exhausted uh, as always. The, yeah, the, the, the niveau of the races are intense uh, for sure. And uh, the spa race was, um, yeah, it was intense too, but it was not so stressful than in uh, Silverstone. So it was, yeah, from, from the start to the finish, uh, a great race and a good result, of course. Yeah, we don't have to talk about the result. It definitely was good. There's no question about that. But, you know, normally I get like a nice list of questions, right, to ask the drivers and ensure that they feel great. But I really like to go in there with a finger and be like, eh, so tell me what went through your hat when you actually spun on that last lap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. Not a complete uh, spun, um, but uh, yeah, I, I was second clearly, and uh, then I um, cheer up a little, a bit too too early <laughs> in the last <laughs> corner, and uh, I um, yeah, I, I saved the car, but uh, uh, our teammate uh, Jasper um, go through and uh, was uh, for a few times, a few seconds. A second, but he has a free second penalty, so at the end, I was uh, second. Yeah, you got a bit lucky there, but uh, as you said already, at least it's not completely wrecked the car afterwards, so you managed to actually crawl across the finish line. And since I know from your channel, obviously, that you do a lot of F1 series uh, in total, and sometimes you drive with people from your community, is that still yeah. something special to do it here, like in a, in a real competition together as a team? Um, yes, of course. It's, it's always special to drive with community members and uh, other influencers um so in this series it's it's not a own created series so that's uh, the really special thing about it yeah, you can't cheat with the rules so you, now. you can invite your 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 followers to to this series and not uh, hey i created own series come to join us <laughs> so yeah. that that's uh, the big difference and that's special in this case yeah and we can't let you do the marshalling yourself because we know then you always get a podium spot so we had to invite you to now finally have a proper competition right <laughs> but now with with a second place in spa what is this, what is it that's missing for you to get a win here in the dream team series hmm more training i i trained uh, for no races uh, at this time and uh, i have not a, not a time for it so it's it's a it's a it's a problem all influenza has <laughs> um but yeah, with a little bit more training, maybe a win is in. But I don't know. I I, I don't know. I have the time for this. <laughs> yeah, practice makes perfect. We all know that. Maybe for Portimao, who knows? Maybe that's your track. All right, Ray, then let's hope you will be as consistent as you need to be to become a champion in the Dream Team Series when we hop over to Portimao. Thanks for joining us for the interview. Thanks, Rene, for the interview. Bye-bye. We heard right in the interview, he's already claiming top spot, but we can't just uh, take it like that, right? We should better look for it ourselves. And that means it's time for the standings after three races in our Dream Team series. And if we look at them in terms of the actual content creators and the single standings, keep in mind that's not super important, but never helps to uh, go with the ego a bit, right? Ray is actually leading 34 points on his McLaren right in front of El Ray and then Amos Laurito. That's the top three in the creator standings, single standings though. Now head over to the team standings of the community first. And that's a pretty clear picture when we look at that because Ray J, the team that was today being represented by Jesper in Formula Lina with 65 points. There's more than 20 points of a gap already in front of the team of Gamer Muscle and Jimmy Broadband. So it seems like we might have our community already that be that will be very, very closely to the trophy and the award winning, basically, for best community. But not over yet. We still have Portimao, so everything can happen there, right? 
And that leads us to the last standing and the last graphic of it, which is the most important one, and that's the standings of the creator teams. There we got El Rey and Amos Lorito leading with 57 before Ray and Jay. And I have to admit here, that's probably not up to, uh, to Ray that they're behind in second. Hydro and Anna on air, the full French team, only behind by four points and third. So they still have a chance on Portimao to jump up the leaderboard. Maxime, Emily Jones, 32 points and fourth. And then unfortunately, probably down to Joe, champion Joe, that we see Gamer Muscle and Jimmy Broadband at the end of the standings. But hey, let's race three. There's still another one coming. And uh, Jimmy, just please don't try to do anything bad to Joe. He tried his best, right? Can't do much about that. <laughs> We're done with race number three, and that means we'll all get prepped for a big race in Portimao and the finish of our first ever Dream Team Series here at Overtake. Keep in mind, there's also the community racing with us, so you should get involved. And first step to do so is to follow us here on YouTube. Don't miss any of the videos at Overtake. Don't miss any of the competitions and tournaments we're doing. And then we'll return soon with Dream Team Series number four, race number four in Portimao. My name is Renee, and I'll see you guys there.